Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Hamish Hodder and in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know about the 10 cap method of valuing stocks. Now, this is a method that is talked about by Phil Town. And if you don't know who Phil Town is, he's an author and a successful investor. And he has a number of books out there uh, talking about how to invest in businesses and his method of investing in businesses using the margin of safety method, growing your earnings into the future, and then discounting them back using a margin of safety and all of that stuff. The stuff that I teach on my channel is very, very similar to the method that he uses and the method that he's used in order to build his wealth over the very long term. And recently he came out with a new book with his daughter, Danielle Town, which was called Invested. And in it, he spoke about this new method of evaluation or a method of evaluation that he uses alongside with the margin of safety method called the 10 cap method. Now, this method involves what's called the owner's earnings, which is something that Warren Buffett talks about many times in his letters to the shareholders. And it's a valuation method that he uses in order to pick stocks to invest in. So today I'm going to teach you all about that. Now, I was going to make an analysis video today. Uh, however, I did a bit of research for a couple of hours and I really couldn't find anything that stood out to me that would make a really, really great business. So I thought I would just leave it and I'll teach you about this for this week and I'll get back into the analysis videos next week. Now, if you have any uh, stocks that you want me to analyze, make sure you leave them down in the comments section of this video and I'll be sure to check them all out and see if I can make a video on any of them uh, that's that's long and interesting and uh, something that we can have a dis discussion about and see if there's any good stocks out there at the current stock price. Uh, I know that since there's been a little bit of a correction, there's a lot of stocks that have fallen uh, in price a little bit. So there might be some more opportunities out there. So I'm excited to get into uh, and look at those. But for now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you become a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. But for now, let's jump into it. All right, so first of all, it's important to know what we're talking about. So what does 10 cap even mean? Some of you might not even know what any of that means and that's completely understandable. It's not uh, something that's talked about too much in the stock market uh, because it's actually mostly from uh, real estate investing. It's, uh, we, it's a formula that is used uh, very prominently in real estate investing and that is the cap rate. So what 10 cap means is that we're going to be targeting a 10% cap rate. And you might not know what a cap rate is, but it's used to value uh, real estate in real estate investing. Uh, and it's really simple. It's basically the net operating income of a certain property divided by its price. And the net operating income can be broken down even further. Basically, it sounds exactly what it is. It's how much income we can produce from the business on a net basis. So if we bring in the, we bring in the rent, that's our income. And then we pay off our operational expenses. So it's rent minus operational expenses. And that gives us our net operating income. And basically the net operating income tells us how much money is this property generating. So we don't just want to talk about the rent that the property can generate. We need to take the rent and minus the operational expenses, things to just maintain the property and keep it running and keep it uh, being able to uh, rent out to tenants uh, and how much money are we getting from that? And this is an important number because from that number, the net operating income that we generate from the business, we have a couple of choices. The first choice is that we can just take the cash and put it in our bank accounts. Um, and a lot of people do this when they invest in real estate, when they're getting towards retirement, they use the net operating income that their profits, that their properties are generating in order to live and retire. So you could just take it as cash the other thing that you could do with it is you could reinvest it back into the property in order to increase the value of the property and therefore you're able to increase the rent or the cash flow from the property. So you have two choices. You can either take the cash or you can reinvest it or you can do a combination of the both. And you might think that sounds very, very similar to businesses on the stock market and it is very similar. When you have a stock, there's two things that that company can do with its cash flow with the money that it generates from the business. First, it could pay out a dividend. It could just take the cash and pay it to its owners, which is you. You get a little bit of a dividend kickback or what they do most of the time and what they will do with the majority of the money that they uh, generate is that they're going to reinvest it in the business in order to increase those cash flows so that sometime down the road, they can increase that cash dividend and pay you out even more. 
So you can see that this is completely relevant to the stock market and stocks because it's exactly what happens within a business and we need to be targeting or we should be targeting uh, a rate of 10% or more to ensure that we get a decent return on the price that we're paying so that the cash flows generated by the business now are giving us a 10% return and then they're going to be reinvested over many, many years and therefore those cash flows will increase and over time that return or that cap rate will increase as well. And in stocks, the cap rate is a little bit differently uh, and Phil Town uses this and you could probably use other numbers in this formula, but I think this is the most effective way and it involves numbers that Warren Buffett uses. And basically what the cap rate is, is it's the owner's earnings divided by the market cap. So basically what that is, is we're taking a number owner's earnings, which I'll explain in a little bit how you get to that number. We're taking that and we're dividing it by the price of the entire business on the stock market, which is basically the market capitalization. Because if you don't know, the market cap or the, the market cap is basically the stock price times by the number of shares. So if you added up all of the shares for a particular business, what is that worth? And that gives you the market cap. So like for example, uh, Apple's stock price at the moment is about $200 per share. So that's how much it is for each slice. But if you add all the slices together, the entire business is currently valued at about $1 trillion. So that would be the market cap. So we're doing the exact same thing as you would do in property investment. We're taking the net operating income, which we're calculating through an owner's earnings formula, and we're dividing it by, instead of the price of the property, the price of the business. Now, in a little bit, I'm gonna explain why we do this and why we target a 10% rate and how this ensures that we're gonna make a big return on our investments. But for now, let's just go through and I'll take you through an example and show you how we calculate the cap rate for a business and how we see what price we should be willing to pay based on our target of a 10% cap rate. All right, so for this example, we're just gonna use Thor Industries, one of the stocks that I'm invested in. Um, and basically, I'm just gonna go through and I've put in a lot of the numbers, but I'm gonna show you where I got each of these numbers from. Um, but I thought I'd just enter in the numbers for the interest in the interest of time. Um, so at the top here, we've got cap rate is uh, owner's earnings divided by market capitalization. And of course, owner's earnings is operating cash flow minus uh, maintenance capital expenditure. So basically what we need to do this, we need the operational cash flow um, and don't worry about what I've written here in italics, that's just so I can find it quickly. Uh, we need the maintenance capital expenditure and we need the market cap. So the easiest one to find is the market cap. You can just come over to Google, search the stock with stock and the little uh, Google stock chart will come up here and you can see down here the market capitalization is 4.24 billion. So I've gone ahead and entered that in. That's the market cap. Then we need operating cash flow. Now you can get this from websites uh, like QuickFS or Yahoo Finance, but I'm gonna show you how to find it in the financial statements so that if it's not out on a website, if the data is not out there, uh, you can find it anyway. So basically what I did was I went over to the Thor Industries website to their IR section, the investor relations, and I've gone and downloaded their latest annual report, which is right here. And it's a massive report, 80 pages long. So what we're gonna do in the interest of time, we'll speed it up. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna search cash flow and um, you'll just scroll through, it's on 17 of 30. So for Thor it's on the 17th, you can see up here there's uh, 30 mentions of the word cash flow. So just go through until you find uh, this, the cash flow statement. So you can see here it's got cash from operation, operating, cash from investing, and then cash from financing. And here you can see net cash provided by operating activities. That's what we're after. So we can see in 2018, they did 466 million, uh, 466.508 million. So I've entered that, and this is supposed to be 508. Um, but yeah, that's there. So then what we need is the maintenance capital expenditure. So I'll show you what we mean here. We can see that purchase of property, plant and equipment. This is capital expenditure, 138 million. But as I mentioned earlier, the capital expenditure is broken down into two sections. There's growth and maintenance. So we don't want to include this whole number because some of this is growth and we don't want to include growth in our calculation. So we're gonna search capital expenditure and you'll come down and what you'll find is there'll be a section where they go through the operating activities, 
and the investing activities and the financing activities. Um, but under investing activities under here, what you'll see is it tells us about how they invested their money. We can see here, primarily due to capital expenditures of 138, so that's that total number that we were just talking about. And if we read a little bit further here, the capital expenditures total of 138 million included approximately 97 million for building additions and improvements. So that right there, that 97 million is their growth capital expenditure because they're saying it's for getting more buildings and improving the, the current buildings. And then it goes on to say, with the remainder primarily to replace machinery and equipment used in the ordinary course of business. So if we take the total capital expenditure of 138 million and we minus this 97 or 98 million, we will be left with the remainder, which is our maintenance capital expenditure. So basically I've written that in here, maintenance capital expenditure is the total capital expenditure of 138 million minus the 98 million, which was for improvements and building additions. So then that leaves us with 40.297 million, which is our maintenance capital expenditure. So then to calculate the owner's earnings, it's very simple. We just take that operating cash flow and we minus the maintenance capital expenditure and that leaves us with our owner's earnings of $426.209 million. And then of course, cap rate is just owner's earnings divided by the market cap. So we've got 426 million uh, divided by 4,240 million, which is the same as 4.2 billion. And if we get our calculator out, we can calculate this. So we can go 4.26.209 divided by 4.240. And as you can see, and we can times that by 100 to get it in percentage, 10.05. So that's our cap rate for Thor Industries at the current time. Uh, it's 10.05, which is right around that 10 cap area. All right, so now that you know how to use the 10 cap method, you might be wondering why we target a 10% return. Why don't we target a 15% return? Or why don't we target something else? And how does that ensure that we're gonna make money over the long term? The idea is that if we're investing in a really great company, one with a wide moat, a great management team that's investing really well and managing their debt really well, and a business that we completely understand uh, fully, we know how it operates and we understand what kind of growth prospects this business has, then if we get it at a 10% return, that is the minimum return we will get. And this kind of makes sense because if they decided to pay the entire owner's earnings or the entire cash that they had left over after their operations out to us as shareholders, then we would make a 10% return every single year because they'd just be paying out that owner's earnings. So that 10% is the minimum that we're going to get because if the business just paid it all out to us, that's the return we would get. We pay $1 billion for the stock and they just pay us out $100 million uh, every single year in dividends overall as a company. Obviously, you'll have a smaller piece of the company, but that's the overall picture. Then you're gonna get a 10% return every single year. But of course, most businesses won't do that because they want to grow. And the rate that they will be able to grow at is their ROIC, their internal return on invested capital. And those internal investments will grow their cash flows over time, which means that the return that you get as a shareholder grows over time. And of course, as the cash flows of the business increase, because a company is basically valued at the discounted cash flows, the, the total of their cash flows over a certain period of time, the value of the business will also increase. So the stock price will go up and the, the dividends that they're going to be able to pay out to you, whether or not they do it early on, they might not, but the ability of the company to pay out that dividend, that number will increase over time. And that basically means that maybe the company doesn't pay out a dividend for the next 10 years, but they, they reinvest all of that money and they grow their cash flows and then they decide to pay out a big dividend. Either way, you're going to get the return that they're getting internally in the business on your stock. So basically you're either gonna get it as a dividend or the stock price will appreciate as the value of the company expands and you'll be able to sell your stock for a higher price. Now, I personally use this method alongside the margin of safety method to ensure that I'm not doing anything too wrong. So I wanna make sure that it's a buy under the margin of safety method and it's also a buy under the 10 cap method to ensure that I'm getting a 10% return on cash flows. And the reason that I do that is because sometimes in the margin of safety method, 
you can estimate really high growth and therefore it looks as though it's a buy using the margin of safety method, but you're actually not getting anywhere near a 10% rate on the stock right now. So it, the, the 10 cap uh, method is really a value investing method. It has nothing to do with growth because you don't estimate growth into the future. You just look at how the company has been investing in the past and you are confident in the management team to continue to invest at that rate, but you don't try and estimate what rate that's going to be. You just buy it at a very, very low price, a low price relative to their cash flows, and therefore uh, you hope that the management team will be able to uh, increase those cash flows over time and pay them out to you either in terms of a dividend or in the stock price. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Let me know if you did and let me know your thoughts on the 10 cap method. Will you be using the 10 cap method? Do you think it's one that you should be using uh, or do you think the margin of safety method is better or I'd, I'd just love to hear your thoughts on the method. Um, subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more. Next video will be out on Thursday and then on Saturday and I actually spoke about owner's earnings in depth uh, in one of the podcasts that me and Brandon from the Aussie Wealth Creation YouTube channel did a couple of weeks ago, I think. So if you go onto the Aussie Wealth Creation YouTube channel uh, and go to the podcast, it's the Young Investors Podcast. Uh, there's one that's all about this method and we speak about it for about half an hour. So if you want to hear a bit of a, a further discussion on this, I suggest you go check that out. But for now, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.